and then had him come speak at our Nationals uh, Youth Academy Barnstormers uh, and gave one of the best transformational leadership talks that I've ever heard. So if you want to go back in and dive in the library and watch that talk. Uh, Scott, where you at? Scott Fox, stand up. Scott also spoke at that Nationals Academy one. If you guys need help with peak performance and mental health with your players, get a hold of Scott and reach out to him. He's phenomenal. He does some really good work with tapping, uh, which you don't always see. He helps guys get back if they get sideways. He has some really good neurological rewiring exercise. I still use those, by the way. So, and then Eric Crozier, who's going to talk later. This is why you come to things like this. This is why you go to the convention, because you're going to meet people that you didn't know existed. I spoke to, at the Alexandria Little League Clinic and didn't know Scott at all. And after I spoke, I talked on peak performance and mental health. He and I developed a bond after that. And Rob, I had just met, but introduced me to Eric. But this is why you come to things like this, because you never know who you're going to meet and connect with. And, uh, you know, Ron does a tremendous job. Associate head coach at Salisbury, he runs their infield as well, but he's a tremendous teacher. If I went to Salisbury, I would want to take one of Dr. Sire's classes. So I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That means I'm really, really old. Yes. And I am. I'm gonna ask you to do a couple things here uh, in this. It's gonna be interactive with your phone. Okay, so if you go on your phone right now, now if you're sitting there going, wait a minute, I'm an Xer and I'm not a Gen Z or somebody can help me out, just look to your left and right. We've got plenty of Gen Zers in here that can help you out. I want you to go to the app Menti Meter. Menti Meter. Some of you may use this a lot. Some of you may go, I don't know what I'm talking about, but if you want this. If you don't want to download the app, Menti Meter. You can go to menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com, and then you can delete the sucker right when I'm finished. You're like, I don't want this on my phone. Get rid of it. Um, but I want to get some data from you before I actually start um, the presentation here. So, M-E-N-T-I. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, right up here, uh, M-E-N-T-I dot com. Now, once you get in, Yes, sir. Once you get in, I want you to think about it in your head and ponder for a moment and think, hmm, if I had to think of the three most important areas or the three, three most important metrics that I utilize in order to enhance uh, my or our team's infield play, please type those in there for me. Whatever you think of. Now, the beautiful thing about many meter is it is anonymous. And we know from the data and the research, right, when things are anonymous, people are, tend to be more what? <laughs> and honest. The three main training areas. I really want to have a really good infield this year. What is it that you spend your time on? Or what is it that you think is important? <laughs> or what is it that you think you would like to develop? Ish. So we did at least half here. Okay, now I want you to keep, now again, remember frequency scales here. This doesn't mean it's right, right? Just this means that more people are saying this on top of it. So it looks like in here, uh, people are saying, man, I want to have really uh, infielders with really good footwork. Um, I want to have good awareness, now whether that's situational uh, awareness um, or not, we'll dive into that a little bit. And it looks like to me, the other one on here uh, would kind of combine hands, footwork, awareness, feet, looks like that's pretty close. And then transfer, looks pretty close. Uh, throwing's making a comeback here. Lots and lots of things here. Now there's nothing on the list that I'm reading initially here that I'm looking at that I'm saying, uh, no, I don't think mental approach really matters. Uh, free pitch readiness, that's only 145, 153 times a game, it doesn't really matter. Um, and how athletic, how often non-athletic yard doesn't matter on top of those. Okay, all right, that's the first one. Thank you for filling that data out on me. Now here's the second one I want you to answer, just again, to get what you think about this before we start. And again, these are totally Anonymous, 
either I strongly disagree, I strongly agree, or I'm kind of somewhere in the middle um, on these. And then we'll get cranking. Right <coughs> now, question three would be whether it's in your district, whether it's in your conference, whether it's in your region, whether it's in your state, whether it's in your division. That would be. in here just let's go old school for real quick just raise your hand how many of you utilize many meter with your teams please raise your hand please everybody look around the room okay dr gong uh, who was one of my grad professors would say oh ron we have a trend in the data <laughs> we got trend in the data um i use these not every day but at least three times a week um, with our guys um, because what this helps me with is the four most important words that I ask them during any training session, any game, pre, post, early work, whatever. What did you learn? Not what Ron Sires can pontificate for an hour and a half telling you what you did wrong and how you can correct it, but no, what did you learn about that? So if I'm reading these here, most of the room is saying, and we have, I'm correct, and there's that 100. We are at 68 responses. Most of you are saying, yeah, I think it's a place for Low standard deviation if you're a numbers guy. On top of that, absolutely, we, this is awesome. We absolutely prioritize it. Uh, some are, we're getting there, we are, we're working towards, right? we're trying to get there. Uh, this one, most are saying, no, don't. Um, uh, this one here, uh, some are doing it. Uh, some are kind of working towards, some are not. Uh, I'll answer these two questions. I have never in my life ever met an infielder that wasn't born. <laughs> but that also wasn't made with the help of all of you wonderful coaches. And man, this, this warms my heart uh, on top of here. A growth mindset and a lifelong learner. Last thing. Anybody that's close to you, shoulder partner behind you, turn to them and say, hey, uh, this is what I know about Tuckman's work as it applies to group and team formations because you all are involved with teams. Tell your shoulder partner real quick, and then we'll call on two people to help us out. <laughs> real quick. Tell <laughs> your smart people this room. Tell me you know. Coach Lampman, you want to start us off? Coach Lampman's going, why are you doing this to me? Yeah, go ahead. I'm still trying to get his ass. You're good. <laughs> no, no, no. Just tell me anything about Tuckman's work on forming formation of teams. And if you don't know, you can pass it to anybody else you know who's calling out. I believe in cold calling. The wonderful <laughs> technique. Anybody else know? Anybody, anybody know anything about Tuckman's work? You guys are all, you all work with teams. Yes. <laughs> good man. It was, it was done in the year I was born because I'm old, 1965. And what Tuckman found in his research was that when teams formulate, especially when we're going to talk about infield play in a minute and how we get to that, we have to understand the stages of that development. Okay? Now, um, one thing that, for example, we know that teams begin as what? They form. And then there's a storming period. We brainstorm. Holy mackerel, I never called it that. That's not what the verbal cue I used. That was not the external cue that I used on top of this. I was a good fielder in high school. I really was. I was really, really good. But now my head's spinning because the terminology might be a little bit too confused. You always think about this in the NFL, somebody mentioned an NFL team. I'll mention my favorite NFL team, and you can pray for me as I've suffered my whole life. Go Browns. Oh no. Yes, on top of that. Um, so I always think of this, like listening to NFL and listening to the cadences have these long sequences of plays on top of that. 
And I always think about why do we make it so complicated? How do we make it so complicated? So if I'm forming the team, and now we are storming and figuring out where we go, then we finally get to the norming. What's acceptable, what's not acceptable, what our standards are, what our values are, what our cues are for our infielders, and then we finally get to performing. Yes, right? We perform well, and then eventually we all get to the end, whenever that is, we get to the end of the year, and hopefully you, get, you win the last game that you play. I wish that to all of you. You win the very last game that you play during the year, and then we adjourn. All right, we tell each other we love each other, and then we kind of come back on. So in going through a couple of the drills I'm going to show you here, uh, on top of this, please keep in mind that all of those stages happen with every team every single year. We are still in between the uh, performing and the norming part. We're 19 days into our fall. We get 24 um, at the Division three level. Uh, this one here, now I'm, I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky, so if I don't pronounce L's at the end of my name, you know where I'm from. Um, but I love Wade Gilbert's work on the hidden hours. We talked to this a lot with our infielders. Okay? It's, I'm not expecting you to do something. I'm not expecting you to do something in a game that I haven't seen you do in a practice, that we haven't measured in practice, that we haven't evaluated in practice, and that we haven't put a plan together for you to get better. Now, it might happen, serendipitously, something may drop down from this, but very rarely uh, do I find that. Turn to your partner, tell them your podcast listener, real quick, yes or no. All right, I see a lot of yes, yes. Tell them, do you listen to this podcast, yes or no? All right, this podcast here is done by Dr. Uh, Rob Gilbert. I love him. I love him. He is now on 11,964 consecutive days of podcasting. Prior to podcasting, this is a 1-800 number. He's been teaching at Montclair State University for 45 years. Start my day every day with this, and what he does is he gives a three to five minute kind of talk about, about Sports psychology, he is a, that's what he is, what his term of degree is in, is in sports psychology. And I use a lot of this with our infielders. But one that I really love the most is this one, man. Success leaves clues. I think uh, Coach Jackson was talking about earlier today, and he mentioned something about, I got this from this guy, and I got that from this guy, and I got that from this guy. And I kind of think back on my own life, yep. He said, yep, got that from Coach Corbin, modified it on my own. Got that from Coach Burton, modified it on my own. Got that from Coach Mejio, modified it on my own. Got that from Kai Corrab, modified it on my own. Got that from Nick Crosby working with him, modified it on my own. So the wonderful thing about this is, is that we're all accumulating this. That's us as coaches. We'll think of your student athletes as they're coming in and you're doing some infield play with them and they're going through that same process of developing their own understanding um, here. I wanted to share with you our five standards right here that we share with all of our infield guys before we start. Because if they don't have these five standards, this is our forming stage. It doesn't matter what skills or drills that I implement or what we measure, because two words you'll never hear us use in our program are buy-in. I would encourage you to eliminate those from your vocabulary. I don't want anybody that plays at Salisbury University to buy-in to anything that we do, I want them to be in to everything that we do because they believe in everything that we do because they're part of the norming and the forming stage on top of that. So when you demonstrate that baseball means something to you, I see you early at practice, I see you late at practice, I see you putting in the hidden hours, I see you putting in extra effort, I see you doing more than expected DMTE than what we are doing. This one here goes back to the stages of learning. Do we have any uh, teachers in the room? Well, you're all teachers. Everybody in this room is a teacher. Anyone a public school teacher and a coach? Okay, first thing is, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. You should be paid five times what you are paid. Minimum, I know I'm biased. I was a public school guy also for 12 years. Yeah, you should be paid a lot more than what you are, but we also know in learning that in infield play here, I want our guys to get to the final stage of learning. And the final stage of learning is unconscious, right? Unconscious competence. I'm not thinking, I'm just reacting. I'm not thinking, I am reacting and succeeding. But to get to unconscious competence, I've got to recognize initially when our student athletes come in, especially with infielders, that everyone is probably initially going to be unconsciously incompetent because you may be doing things a little bit different. Now, when you share this with your student athletes, I think it was the last uh, speaker who was talking about this, right? It's a growth mindset. It's the idea, hey, we're here to get better. It's not punitive, okay? It's the idea that I'm trying to help you and the more foundational information I can give you to build on, and we all know this also, Coach Cohen told, told me this probably about two and a half decades ago, um, is that prior to the age of 25, 
we do not have a fully developed prefrontal cortex in our brain. Now, what does our prefrontal cortex do for us? Is there some, yes, sir. Uh, Decision-making executive function. Yeah, making good decisions, right? That's why all of our, all of our student athletes, all of our students on campus make great decisions on Halloween night, <laughs> right? They don't have a fully developed prefrontal cortex, so sometimes they may rely on instant gratification, only when it's got me here, as Marshall Goldsmith told us long ago, what got me here won't keep me here. So consequently, as they are coming into that, we want to make sure here that they have a passion to get to automaticity, to get to that unconscious competence in what we're doing. I need to have passion. I love this here. Kumar Rocker's quote, man, this is one of our standards. I, I absolutely love this. Be the teammate you want to play with. Be the teammate you want to play with. And our last one that is vitally important to us is that um, Dr. King said it much better than me. You don't have to be great to serve, but you have to serve if you ever want to be great. So consequently, with our infielders, our outfielders, all of those, they all will serve. We serve every Friday morning at 6.15 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. at Halo. It's open life outreach. It's a homeless shelter in Salisbury, Maryland. We have a very big, large food insecure. We don't do it. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Don't hear what I'm not saying. We don't do it just one time a year. We do it every Friday. And we divide our group set. Now, what does that teach? Besides transformational leadership and servant leadership, it also teaches me how to be a great teammate. It also teaches me holy mackerel, and I'm complaining or griping about my five-page paper, my 10-page paper, or about how I was unsuccessful yesterday, and our command control throws. Are you kidding me? And we're serving individuals who are getting on a school bus to go to school. So if you have a good foundation that is established on top of this, in our opinion, it gives us a great opportunity to do this. Now, here's the big three I'm going to give you. Um, the big three things. Now, again, 35 years, I'm old. I've done a lot of things wrong. I've done some good. I've modified. I've changed as I've gone through. But one thing that I've always tried to do, and I love to see this many people here, it's absolutely fantastic, is I've always tried to be a lifelong learner. Right? What can I glean from someone else that I can take back and utilize in our program? If you're a high school person, youth program, I would highly encourage you to practice what's called outsiding in the literature. Outsiding means get outside the baseball domain and go watch other sports and see what they do. So this fall, I go with football practices, field hockey practices, volleyball practices, women and men's basketball practices. So I try to pick up things that are there that I go, whoa, man, I can use that with our infielders. I can use that on the how to do this. Now, I think the score on this, if I remember correctly, was a, I think this one was a 3.5. I think the question here was, do you measure, do you measure? You guys all told me, 9.8 said, yes, infield play is important. Dang on right it is. Okay, and we know that what we me measure, I get a better chance to manage, and once I can manage it, I can implement it, and I can improve it. Well, this is what we keep each day at practice. Now, this was done, and this has been updated, okay? Um, at the Division Three level, we are afforded only 24 practices in the fall. That's all that we get is 24 practices on top of the fall. So we are down on uh, tomorrow. We actually take practice 20. Uh, I know the Maryland is doing the World Series uh, here uh, this weekend, and we will do our World Series series next weekend. But every single practice that we come to, we keep track of this. Now you can do this on an iPad. You can do it on a tablet. Or if you want to go old school, you can have somebody keep the day on short on top of it, on top of this. Now, um, what, I, what you also will find out, especially I'm coaching in high school in here, is that most of you, not me certainly, but there's probably some people in the room that got these things when they were three. I'm being facetious, right? But you can do a lot of things and utilize a lot of data so you can be data informed, not necessarily data driven. Sometimes I know when I get data driven, I tend to make mistakes because I don't take in all the other variables. So here's a chart here. If you want this chart, all you got to do is go on the SU Baseball website, look at my big ugly face on there, click on it, right? See what the email is? Boom, boom, boom. No shares, I got gotcha, you, and I will send it to you. Now, um, I've modified this over the year, the years. I got this back in the early 2000s from Tim Corbin at Vanderbilt, and I've kind of modified it and adapted it away on top. So you can see right here, We've got our normal metric put out to SIS. Uh, how many errors did we make fielding or throwing? Did we make a web gem? 
Now dives for us is, did I make a dive in a play infield wise and I redirected the fly to the ball? Not I did an academy award, right? I just dove, <laughs> please see me coach. Right on top of that, the ball goes 500 feet. On top of that, that doesn't really tell me uh, anything for this. Uh, balls off chest, especially if we're doing any power grab ball rounds there in the infield. This here will be total web gems and picks. And picks, total chances, fielding percentage. You can see down here, these are our standards. So we want everybody in the blue. We want everybody in the blue. Now, we've been very fortunate because we get really good players. I'll repeat that. We get really good players, which helps make us be better coaches. We also play on a fully turfed field, right? So kind of do the math. Well, yeah, you should be able to field ground balls on it. Amen. On top of that, okay? But we don't want to be in the yellow. We don't want to be in the yellow. Yellow is below standard. Then this is one day, this is all aggravated, aggregated here from the fall. Got to be above a thousand. A thousand gives me eight feet, eight feet, eight feet, eight feet. Anything a thousand or below tells me if the ground ball is hit to you, you will field it. That's great. But if it's hit eight, eight, and eight, you're not going to field it. And they keep running around the bases and the goals lose as we go. And then we have the range on top of this. Now, what I will do is we aggregate these, they aggregate these, and I'll keep these updated, post them every single day. Now, what does this do? Tell the person sitting next to you, what do you think this does during a training or practice session, knowing that every single ball that is put in play during an offensive BP round will be charted? Tell the person next to you real quick. What do you think that does to pressure. them? Pressure. Yep. Anybody, real quick, anybody want to shout it out? Yeah, it makes it, makes it competitive. The intensity level goes up. And when I focus level goes up and I know when I send it out on a group me, right? Or some days I don't send it out in the group me purposely. And then as soon as they'll get to practice, they walk in the dugout and it's just like, <laughs> where am I? I love the arguments that come also because it helps with communication. Coach, I had a dive yesterday. I need to put, no, 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 no. That's your teammate there. He loves you. He's telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So that's why I didn't give you a dive on top of that as we go through. Okay, that, that's my number one. Again, if you want this, I'll send it to you. You're good to go. Second one is uh, raise your hand if you do a lot of BP sides work during team offense during BP. Okay, we got some hands on this one. Four or five. Uh, I started doing this probably, geez, I'm going to say probably about 18, 19 years ago. Uh, I will say this is one of the utopian moments where I thought, holy mother of pearl, this is fabulous. Now, the nice thing that we have in our facility is we have all turf. So literally, I can go anywhere that I want on this. But during a team offensive BP round, right? So we're having our team round that's going on. And then during that, in the, in the rotations that go through, whether it's four groups or five groups, one of those groups will rotate over to me, right? Infielders, middle infield guys, corner infield guys, first baseman only, third baseman only. On top of it, I'm also a defense coordinator, so I work with the outfielders and the catchers as well. And everything that we were doing on the side, we are also charting and measuring because at my age, sometimes I'll go back and go, huh, was it 80%? I don't know. He looked pretty good. Well, what does that mean that he looks pretty good on top of these? So here is a series of 37. Again, same thing. You want this, you shoot me an email, click on my face, bam, I'll yes, send it to you. I'm sorry. I love you too. All right. Uh, on the sheet that's here uh, are 37 different drills. I'm going to show a couple of them here for you. Um, that we have gleaned and have utilized over the time. John Cohen did a great job with this um, back in the early 2000s, late 90s, of wondering why people don't play wall ball as much. Now, our cross team at Salisbury is really, really good. Coach Berkman has run out of fingers to put his 13 national championship rings on, so he has to wear them on his toes now. Holy mother of pearl. Uh, on top of that, but he always talked about wall ball, wall ball, wall ball. Well, these particular drills right here, I'm gonna show you a couple are variations. Now, I also noticed this too on this, you will see the difference in between the Division I videos and the Division Three videos. But I noticed when I put the tops here uh, together, even though our GA did very good. So you see the pitch back that's going on right there in the front. We have three of our infielders yesterday. Now this work right here is done before pre-practice. So some of you I know do EDDs, right? Everyday drills that are on top of this. If I'm in a high school and I'm sitting there thinking, well, wait a minute, I'm kind of understaffed. I don't have a GA. I don't have five assistant coaches. And I don't have a volunteer. It's me and Mr. Smith, who's a physics teacher. He's a nice guy. And he said he would do it. All right? 
I did that as a high school coach. I, I did the same thing with that. I said, man, you are a great teacher. Would you? I don't know anything. I don't care. You're a great teacher. The kids love you. You build relationships with them. I, 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 okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. So you'll see over here on the side that we're doing all those drills, whether it's a double shuffles, arm slot. We're real big on arm slot and platforms, and I'll get to that one um, in just a minute. Then you'll see some here on the other side um, as well. Now that pitch pack right there is an eight by eight. Okay, they're actually made in Florida. They're about 750 bucks. If you're going, I don't have 750 bucks uh, on top of that. Um, if, if you have locational services within your particular high schools or areas, you can ask them, say, please can you help me out? Because I don't have a dinero um, to do um, all of those that are on there. Okay, so that's the first thing. Those are all defensive skill work. Now, the other thing, on these, same thing. You go, you want these, shoot me an email and I'll send them to you. Uh, one thing, and this was on that screen, what are the three things we need to do? We need to have good feet defensive drills every day. S segmenting those, sequencing those, great. We also need to be able to measure things so that we're doing it game speed, right? Game speed as opposed to, well, I'm kind of comfortable. I know Nick Trotsky talks a lot about um, the idea that it's a 10, 70, 10 quadrant. So about 10% if you watch guys throw when they warm up, about 10 guys are really lazy. About 75% when they go through things, kind of do it at a comfortable speed. And then you got another 10% that, man, they're going game speed. And then you got the other 10% that's, that's bifurcated into two sets of five, where somebody's going above speed and then hyper speed on top of this. Well, this is one thing right here that I thought was our guy, uh, and I was very fortunate this December to work uh, with Nate Trotsky at some of his camps. And one thing that I was asking him a lot was, I said, hey, man, you know, defensively, as far, again, we play on a turf field for crying out loud, okay? We, we should be pretty good defensively on top of that. We are, I said, but one thing that I don't think we or me do a very good job of yet is also measuring the command control of our throws. So whether we're throwing at one, two, three, four o'clock, different platforms. I know the coaches were showing here, right foot, left foot on our knee, left knee, right knee, whatever it may be. On top of those, are we actually measuring the command of that particular throw? Okay, so for example, um, we'll use the same thing that Nate uses. You have a T1 zone or a target one is my chest. Every ball is thrown, does it go to my chest? A T2 zone is does it go to my chest, to my head? And then a T3 zone here, a T3 zone right here would be, no, it's not on my chest, it's not in my head to my chest, it's outside of the zone on top of those. Then we have an overthrow. Right now, I would suggest if you do these, make sure when you're doing these, I'll show you there, there's no one behind you, okay, on some of these, or if you're doing them on the side, and if you've got really, really good, accurate command style throwers who are very, very athletic, then you can pretty much do it uh, wherever you want. And then what we'll do is, we will have each individual player that will chart these two sequences, they will give a command percentage that is here. I give a ratio here of actually half how to do the division. That's for those who may not be um, actual good with math and or into finance. So I will help them with that. And then what I'll do is I will post the numbers on top of that of where they are. Okay, and I'll show you some of these here that we do too. So you'll see our student athletes actually doing the throwing. That are here, skater series. Now you see the individual is down at the end as Roman and Roman for us on the left hand side. Here's one of our outfielders. Okay, so all those sequences that are there, whether we're going three steps left, inside pivot, three steps left, outside pivot, whether or not we're skating and stacking on the backside, whether or not we're following through, are we going one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, as I'll call out different arm slots as we go through on top of these, trying again to replicate here every single thing that we're going to actually have happen in the game have it happen in the game. And then showing the accuracy of that, so that when I accumulate all of that data and look at all of that data and break all that data down, then I can put a better plan together to try to help the student athlete on top of that. We do focus groups with our student athletes at the end of every fall. I'll do it again with our guys. I go back on the defensive side of everything that we do and I ask them, number one, what did you learn? What was helpful? in your learning, not what was fun, what did you enjoy, because 18 to 22 year olds enjoy things that may not be good for them, right? But what actually helped you? I can't give you confidence, but I can give you competence. And the way that I can give you competence is I can enhance your skill set, but then you've got to go out and have demonstrated performance, and now you've got confidence where basically you've got a mountain without a top. So if you want any of those throwing, these are all on BP side. Now these were actually done um, on yesterday's practice while we're actually hitting um, on the field, okay? So again, if you want them, I will send every single one of them 
come here to you. Last thing here, um, as we wrap up, um, I love what was mentioned here previously, the previous speaker talking about the power of positivity, right? Kind of, but also remember the Stockdale paradox in life. You, you got to realize and confront the brutal reality of where you are. What's your gap analysis? Are you good fielders? Are you good athletic throwers? Are you average fielders? Are you average athletic throwers? Are you poor fielders or are you poor athletic fielders? And can I share that data with the student athletes? If I can, and I can show continual growth on top of that, we all are empowered by visual monitoring. When we see ourselves growing through that, we tend to develop into some better infielders. Last one, and then I think my time is done. Um, you can hit me up at any of those um, that you want. Uh, I try during the fall, and especially during the spring, uh, to post on the socials there some of the particular drills and skills that we are doing. Um, I have been blessed beyond belief in the learning network that the ABCA has provided for me um, and that the ABCA provides for each other. Thank you all for coming. Wish you the best of luck this year, and I hope you win the last game that you play. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan, I got one question for you. Yes, sir. How long did it take you to find your voice? You're a very good presenter. How long did it take you to kind of find your voice in what you're doing? From me or from my kids or my family's perspective? Um, I would say I think I had an advantage in the environment because I, I was a public school teacher. That's kind of how I was trained. So I was kind of trained in pedagogy from like 21 on. Um, but I know this, the more that I learn and the more that I failed, and the more that I failed at that learning, the better uh, that I got. And I tried to have a humble curiosity in life to where I always assume, rightly so, that when I walk in the room, I am the dimmest bulb. So yeah, constantly trying to learn. You know, we're, gonna, we're all going to make mistakes. Oh, yeah. How long did it take you to go, okay, I, I got to flow through mistakes. I can't worry about yeah. it. They're learning experiences. Uh, I would say oof, probably at, I, that's a good six, seven, eight years into the – yeah, easily, easily into that. When I started focusing more on, like you mentioned all the time, you know, control what you can't control, right, control those variables that I can and not worry about all the things that, that, that I can't control. Yes. Thanks, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.